Greetings, I'm John Speard. The number of fluids we'll be working with today boggles the mind, but does not compare to the number we'll be working with in the future, and welcome to Modern Minecraft Super Shorts. Today we're going to try our absolute darndest to start and finish systems that create polyethylene and hopefully also polyvinyl chloride. I have done a lot of work coming up with all the stuff I need for this, and the fruit of my work is in the bottom right of this chest. As ethylene is the source of both polyethylene and vinyl chloride, I'm going to start with it, and so to start with that we're going to make ethanol first. Ethanol can be distilled from several items, but the highest efficiency that we can get for the materials we have is biomass. You can get um, 700 millibuckets of ethanol from every 1,000 millibuckets of biomass. To recycle energetic alloy cables that are not of the type you like, you can macerate them, and they will macerate into the correct amount of the dust that you require. I'm going to use a new method of power distribution that is more efficient in terms of cables, which is called the tower. Our MVCF will go right here and feed into the cables. And the cables will run around the tower in a trench, so that we don't have to wire them inconveniently around the whole, like, left and right and edges of the tower, which would be unpretty. We will be creating biomass using brewing machines. The best method we can use is, of course, sugar cane, and we're going to run three brewing machines. At MV, they'll create 100 biomass every 10 seconds. I rather like how they look, don't you? We will fluid filter each of them with an insert on water. Again, you can drag fluids from the right when you're not in cheat mode. And we're using the brown line. Water is now busily and slowly filling these breweries. The endervoir isn't very fast. We're either going to parallelize by creating a lot of endervoirs, or we're just going to wait until we get something called the aqueous accumulator, if I could spell it right. The aqueous accumulator, um, which will create us water very quickly. Unfortunately, it requires mana-infused ingots, which are some work. Luckily, the power of Round Robin is a strong one, and they are all filling in their own time. Then we'll add our distillery. The distillery is a baby version of the distillation tower, which is capable of taking a material or a fluid and splitting it up into multiple different fluids at once. Biomass can be distilled into ethanol and water using a distillation tower both at once, but if you only care about one product and you're not worried about the waste, then you can distill by using the distillery and pick a single fluid to distill. To do this, you use an integrated circuit. I also cannot currently be bothered to make stainless steel, which takes chrome, and chrome is very difficult. Anyway, let's make an integrated circuit, and we have it set to zero and insert it here and we'll filter it on biomass. Next, we'll filter these breweries on sugarcane. Remember, the Ender IO diagram lets you choose which conduit you're looking at. Sugarcane is now filling this brewery, and we'll do the same for this one, and we'll watch it fill. The next step to get ethylene is to create sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very easy. We only need a chemical reactor with sulfur dust. And guess who totally prepared and started making sulfur for this express purpose using blaze matter? We will fluid filter this chemical reactor on water, as water is needed to react with sulfur and make sulfuric acid, and we'll insert sulfur dust. Now, one chemical reactor creating ethylene will use 16.6 .6 ethanol per second, but we are creating 21 millibuckets per second of ethanol, so we'll need two chemical reactors in order to do this. We'll filter both of these on ethanol and sulfuric acid, and rest assured that it won't accidentally overfill. These machines will affect a certain type of fluid in only one slot. If you want to put the same fluid in multiple slots in one of these RegTech machines for some reason, you can use multiple input sides. But if you use the same input side, um, then any type of fluid you insert into that side will only be inserted into one slot. Now to watch this system go by hooking up the power source. Oh, no, this sign is in the way. I knew there was a reason I wanted to extend this tower one back. Well, I'm not going to fix it. All right, everybody's running. Biomass is being produced in the breweries and is getting turned, or will eventually be turned once there's a thousand biomass here, into 700 ethanol. Sulfuric acid is being produced 3,000 every 57.5 seconds. Also, we're about to see this turn, but once it's finished, it's going to start getting inserted into these chemical reactors, again on a lovely round robin mode. And here goes with the ethanol, and it should be extracted as soon as I set this to extract always active, and we'll get them both in the chemical reactors. 
This appears to take a while to fill up and start running, because if we're getting 21 millibuckets per second, and we need 1,000 millibuckets of ethanol to run this, then it takes 47 seconds to fill it up. But on average, we get 21 millibuckets per second. You may think this is kind of a small amount, but in the long run, the amount of polyethylene we need will not be too much, and if we're going to need to upscale production, it'll be many tiers later. Now we have our first ethylene. Question, what are we going to do with this diluted sulfuric acid? We could distill it into sulfuric acid, but sulfuric acid is so unbelievably cheap that we are just going to throw it away using a fluid trash can filtered very carefully. I'm going to place my fluid trash can actually way over here because I can use a fluid filter to insert several types of fluids into it and I really don't want to create a ton of them so I might as well have it in a consolidated place that I can always go to. So I'm going to filter it on diluted sulfuric acid, set it to insert on brown, run over here and watch our diluted sulfuric acid disappear. We've got ethylene, hurrah, hooray. Now what are we going to do with it? We're going to make two different things. One is polyethylene, and the other is going to be, if I can locate it, vinyl chloride. We can increase this, the efficiency of ethylene to polyethylene and vinyl chloride if we use a different recipe from the normal, which is to use oxygen rather than air. I've done some calculation to determine how much oxygen we need. The point is that for every 144 millibuckets of ethylene, you need 1,000 millibuckets of oxygen. So if we're going to be running 210 millibuckets of ethylene per second, we're going to need about 1,500 millibuckets of oxygen per tick. I mean second. Now at MV, we can centrifuge air into oxygen and nitrogen at a rate of 500 oxygen every 10 seconds. So we're going to need three centrifuges. Well, okay, my calculations tell me that we're going to need four centrifuges, but shh, that's a secret. To get air, we're going to need to use an air collector. An advanced air collector makes air at a rate of 100 millibuckets per tick. I've calculated that we'll need 75 air per tick. Note, I need to keep using conduits. Energetic alloy is kind of expensive, but eventually we're going to be able to switch entirely to using something called N-Steel, which is a lot cheaper because it doesn't require the whole gold, redstone, and glowstone in a blast furnace. That'll be great when we get there. Technically, it's a bit silly for me to be counting my chickens before they hatch and adding a tower when I already have technically the possibility for 16 machines on this tower, but I don't think I'm going to put 16 machines on this tower, and I kind of want to segregate the way that I'm like organizing my machines, so for now I'm going to bear with the fact that it's a 16 times CEF. And if I need to, I'll stick another 16 times CEF, which is the evil method, but it's still okay. For some reason, this advanced air collector is pushing directly into this conduit, even though it isn't even set to extract always active. That's extremely annoying, but that's okay. I will filter everything promptly. I'm glad I separated that before bad and horrible things happened. We'll filter all these four on air. Nitrogen's great for many things. Right now, I don't need it for any of them. And since my whole system is based on creating as few buffers as possible and working on on-demand, passive crafting, I'm just going to throw it all away. For now. It's a travesty, I know. But it's my strange, exciting method, I guess exciting to me, a restriction that allows me to do engineering I wouldn't have otherwise done, and I like doing that sort of thing. So I'm excited to continue doing this engineering. Now filtering nitrogen into this fluid filter and watching it go, or I'm watching it, I can't watch it flow because it's a trash can, but it's okay. But now the nitrogen is gone and I am happy and a fool. With the power of ethylene and oxygen, I can make polyethylene, but that's not my next step. I want to get the chlorine I need in order to make vinyl chloride. There are two ways I can go about this. I can either use chlorine and ethylene together and create vinyl chloride and then hydrochloric acid, and then use hydrochloric acid and ethylene and oxygen to make water and vinyl chlorine, but I can also just use the hydrochloric acid route, because 2-chlorine is equivalent to 2-hydrochloric acid. And so this whole roundabout method, which ultimately gets me two buckets of vinyl chloride, can be simplified, and this is the important part, can be simplified to using two buckets of hydrochloric acid, which is equivalent to two buckets of chlorine, to create two buckets of vinyl chloride. Why is hydrochloric acid so easy, you ask? Because hydrochloric acid can be chemical reacted from hydrogen and chlorine, and you get chlorine and hydrogen from electrolyzing salt water. Note, this is the main way of getting chlorine. You can also get it from rock salt, which is pretty nice, but it's not as great. New question, where am I going to get the salt water? I'm going to get the salt water by mixing salt with water. Unbelievable. But to get the salt, I am going to need to use some ore processing. Unfortunately, I cannot get salt from DML, which means I have to get it from crushing down salt ore. So I can't automate it right now, except if I plug a bunch of salt ore into the system by buying it with Omnicoins, then I'll have lots and lots and lots of salt, hopefully to last me for a long time. We'll see if that actually holds up. 
Salt ore, which can be bought with only five omnipennies, can be pulverized into six crushed salt ore every 20 seconds, and crushed salt ore can be pulverized into impure piles of salt ore every 10 seconds. What this comes out to is a 3 to 1 ratio of salt ore pulverize- of crushed salt- sorry, three crushed salt ore pulverizers for every one salt ore pulverizer. And I have to use two centrifuges to turn impure piles of salt into salt. Seriously, I am using so much energetic alloy, it is nobody's business. I am suddenly disturbed at my organization. I have blast furnaces on the left side of these columns, and I have things on the left side of these columns, but those are from different perspectives. If you look at it from the perspective of the entire base, they're on opposite sides. I am disturbed. I can either salvage this by starting from the blast furnace or starting after the blast furnace, put all designs on the right set of columns on the right of those columns, or I can just stick with it. And I think what I'm going to do is stick with it. Remember, you can turn a Greg Tech machine to face in the face you desire by shift right clicking on that face with a wrench. Don't forget the trench. This bottommost macerator we will filter on the salt ore. In order to enhance our gain of chlorine, we're going to want to use rock salt in an electrolyzer. We'll throw away the potassium because it's useless to us for most purposes. The reason I'm saying this is because salt ore can produce either stone dust or rock salt, and crushed salt ore produces only rock salt. Now you may have a question for me. You may note that salt ore has three outputs in pulverization, but our advanced macerator only has two outputs. What's going to happen? The inconvenient result that if we happen to get rock salt and stone dust in the same process, we'll only get one of them. H3 macerators, which have three slots, will fix this. There is another inconvenient problem. Two outputs are coming out of this macerator. Six crushed salt ore that I want to round robin into three different macerators, and stone dust or rock salt. But you may remember from a previous episode that it is futile to try and round robin out of a machine where there are two items flowing out from the same ender IO conduit. That's why we set up this convoluted system. My hopeful solution is to extract with a filter upgrade to say only extract this certain type of item and put the same filter on the other side and we're going to see if that helps us. Unfortunately, I need so many other filters. So rather than three filters being set for crushed rock salt ore, which is going to go in these three macerators, we'll set four. The fourth to extract out of this macerator. Crushed salt ore. One in the extract of this macerator, just like I promised, and then the insert of each of these. Now, because I'll be extracting impure piles of salt from all three of these macerators, but the macerators will also be producing rock salt, I'm going to filter these item filters on that impure salt filtering the filters on impure salt, and then putting them one by one into the macerators. I'll filter the centrifuges on impure piles of salt. I will also electrolyze the rock salt. So I'll be filtering it on rock salt on insert, and then I'll make a trash can, which I'll line up right here, and we'll filter it on potassium, which is the useless result of the rock salt that we don't want. Now your question to me may be, how are we going to extract this rock salt if we're only extracting a single item from our macerators with other conduits on the other side? This bottom macerator will have a filter on stone dust, I believe, which just looks like this, and also the rock salt. And then these three other macerators will be filtered on rock salt only. So I'll be using this conduit for this macerator, and then these two conduits for these. Also, happy days, we have so many buckets of ethylene. By the way, this might be my longest episode ever, maybe I made a terrible mistake, but it's okay, we're gonna keep checking along because people have asked for longer episodes. For a time, I'm going to trash stone dust, although it can be made into silicon dioxide, which I can electrolyze into more oxygen. And though I'm always in need of more oxygen, I don't think I'm gonna do that right now, but it'll be a great thing later. Now we need to mix salt into salt water, and then we're going to electrolyze salt water into chlorine and hydrogen, and then we're going to insert both of those into the same machine, which will be a chemical reactor, to make hydrochloric acid. To do this, we're actually going to use the automatic output feature of Greg Tech machines. I'll remind you how to do this. We'll place down a machine, we're going to right click on a face to make it the auto output face, and then we'll set auto output fluids. Then we'll electrolyze, again, use this to make it output there, and then set it to auto output fluids, and finally place down our advanced chemical reactor. We'll extract our salt and borax on always active from both of these centrifuges, and I'm not going to bother with round robining because salt is only going in one mixer, but the borax is going to go in a drawer, which I'm probably going to place, I don't know, right here with a filter on it. I'll process it later. 
and I'll filter the mixer on salt. We'll fluid filter the mixer on water as well. We'll filter both these chemical reactors, one making chlorine and one making hydrochloric acid, to extract always active on brown. The mixture is now being filled with water as I've connected my fluid conduits to it. And assuming I haven't made any mistakes or done anything wrong, all of this should work. The last thing I think we'll need is a drawer that we're going to fill up with salt ore, and we're going to have it extract always active on round robin mode, not that we'll be round robining for now. Let's buy a small amount of salt ore and see what happens. The salt ore goes in and immediately starts getting extracted into our macerator, which is already going. Crushed salt ore gets inserted into these advanced macerators and gets turned into impure piles of salt. Rock salt is going into these electrolyzers and eventually going to turn into chlorine, and it looks like these centrifuges are running with our salt. Borax is going into the basic drawer that's supposed to have borax. Salt is going to the advanced mixture. Salt water is making hydrogen and chlorine, and we're getting hydrochloric acid. If I couldn't make sodium hydroxide out of sodium and water, I would not trash the sodium hydroxide, but that's actually what I'm going to do right now. There's one concern we have, is that if the chlorine here clogs up because we fill it up too fast, then we're not going to make any hydrochloric acid. So what I'm going to do is create a drawer for rock salt so that the rock salt doesn't clog up. We're going to right click on it and then press lock. We are going to lower its priority as an insertion possibility. So rock salt will enter here last, and we're going to make it extract always active. So this will serve as a little buffer. If rock salt can't fit in the electrolyzer because it's full of chlorine and full of rock salt, it'll go in the drawer. But eventually, the drawer will start extracting rock salt and shoving it back in the electrolyzer once the chlorine starts getting used, which will be when? I don't know. The important thing is that we're saving an important resource, and I know that goes against my no buffer policy, but when it's a resource like ore that I can't replicate right now without omnipennies, I want to save all the resources I can from it. And now, with hydrochloric acid, it is time to gloriously wrap up this episode using polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride creation. Ethylene is used for both polyethylene and vinyl chloride. I want to split them evenly, so I'm going to have one machine for vinyl chloride and one machine for ethylene. Note, I say vinyl chloride because polyvinyl chloride is made from vinyl chloride. We're also going to have an excess of water. I'm going to accept that to extract and really hope it doesn't clog up because otherwise I have to trash water and trashing water gets weird. This bottom reactor will be our ethylene oxygen polyethylene reactor, so that's what I'll be filtering it on. This reactor will be filtered on ethylene, hydrochloric acid, and oxygen. And when I set them both to insert on brown, we should get an even distribution. That is the hope. I want an even distribution of ethylene between the two objects. It's working! This one got filled slightly slower with ethylene because I started this one on brown first. Anyway, it still works. Finally, we need to set up polyvinyl chloride, which is going to be vinyl chloride and oxygen. So let me put a fluid conduit on there, and then I will set up my fluid filter for it. And then you'll note we do need integrated circuits for this. Let me check if it's the same for polyethylene. I'm pretty sure they all need integrated circuit zero. You can set multiple integrated circuits at once by right-clicking on a bunch of them in your hand. Now let's put them in the chemical reactors and watch the magic happen. Excuse me, it was actually integrated circuit configuration 3 that makes vinyl chloride. No wonder it was creating this useless polyethylene. I'm so angry now. Anyway, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. There. Now we're making vinyl chloride, and our water is kind of slowly being used. I'll fix that later by distilling water or something. I don't know. Anyway, the point is, we have the two most important plastics at this stage in the game, polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride. I'm very excited. We'll be able to use these for so many awesome things. It's super great. We are ready, super ready, to create refined circuits, and I am very excited to show you guys how to make these. Um, but one of the next steps is going to be to learn to make SMD transistors and SMD capacitors and SMD uh, resistors and so on. These will help us to make our refined circuits at the cheapest possible rate. It's going to be great. I will see you guys soon for this exciting time. Also, one quick tip, in order to empty things into the fluid trash can, you can just right-click on them with the steel drum or any other fluid-containing device. Also, I'm going to install upgrades onto this basic drawer so it doesn't fill up with borax and ruin everything. Anyway, that's it for today's video. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I really appreciate it when you guys comment. Um, I hope to see you in the next video, and God bless you all.